What up, y'all? Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna talk about brute force. The modern lifting, bro. A A A E B B C O W. Oh. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness. Jesse Warden. What is brute force? Brute force is a way to attack hash functions to understand what the hash actually equals. Now last week we talked about what hash functions are. They're a function that takes an arbitrary input. So you can pass in any strength you want, any length string you want. You can do a three character cow. You could do this 100 character long password. Input it in and you're always gonna get a 64 character length string out. That's what this hash function does. This is SHA-256. If I put in cow, I'm always gonna get this. If I put in this password, I'm always gonna get this. And the hashes are different. And this is kind of the basis of how a lot of people store sensitive information, compare files, passwords, things like that. But they're not all secure from brute force attacks. Brute force is using what computers are good at, and that is guessing every single combination because they're really good at iterating through numbers and iterating through strings and various combinations. So in the case of the password being three letters, we know that it's AAA, nope, BBB, nope, COW, yep. And so it can run through those hash functions, which are pretty fast, and compare those hashes. So there's a lot of ways to protect against this. It gets a lot more complex, but I wanted to show you the basics of using brute force with JavaScript. Now there's a variety of libraries for brute forcing, but most of them are in C and they're for Linux and Unix, some for Windows for recovering lost zip files and things like that. JavaScript, we're gonna use this thing called brute force. And what brute force will do is it takes a configuration object and says, look, out of all these particular characters of this character set, I want to find all possible combinations in a particular length, in this case, three. So AAA, AAB, BBA, BBC, that kind of thing. Go through every single possible combination. And every time you have a combination, go ahead and call this function. In our case, we're going to log it out. So I'll do one. And given the fact that I give it 26 characters, all lowercase, if we run brute force example, you'll see that it prints all 26 character combinations to the screen, including empty or space. Now, if I change this to two, you'll see that it's going to go through every iteration, A, space, A, 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 B, all the way down to Z. If we go to three, it's going to be a significantly longer amount to calculate, but it still is reasonably fast. My terminal is not, unfortunately, long enough from the buffer perspective to show you every combination. Let's try to show you an example. Let's say we actually know the length. So we know the input was three, right? Our password is cow here. And let me show you what the actual SHA-256 hash is, so you can see what it is. So if I pass in cow, I'm always going to get the 64 character length string. Now we got lucky for whatever reason, and we know that the length of the input to make this hash is three. So that way we can be a little bit smarter and faster about what we have to calculate here. We're still all only doing all lowercase characters, not adding numbers or anything like that. We're gonna hash whatever the guess is, and we're gonna compare it against the password hash. If they match, we know that this is the password because the hashing function is deterministic. Same input, same output. If you pass in, you're always gonna get the same result. If we pass in cow, we always get this. That means if this guess is always gonna result in the same hash, then if the hash is matched, this is what actually made the hash. Although hashing functions are one way, if you use brute force to compare the hashes and you find a match, that's how you can go the other way. Let's run this code here and see how long it takes to find our match. Let me save this file, rerun it. And it, with all the printing statements out and things like that, it took about 111 milliseconds. If I were to remove the log statements, it would take about 8 milliseconds. So logging adds a lot of time. But you can see it went through every single combination, like CNN, for example, hashed it, and compared this 64-character number with the original hash. They didn't match. But down here, it guessed cow, hashed it, and said these hashes match. So if the hashes match, you know that this is the password. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is brute force using any library, which is really good about iterating through a series of characters, getting every single possible combination together, and letting you know what that current guess is. You can then hash that guess of whatever it is compared to, against the hash you have. And if they match, then you know that this was what was used to calculate the hash because hash functions have the same input, same output, always. They're deterministic. So once you find a match, you know that that's how you can cheat by going the other way using brute force.